Thanks for staying with us. So there are lots of current um, untold economic hardship in Nigeria. Many parents are finding it extremely difficult to cater for their children's school fees and other academic obligations due to the increment in tuition fees, rising food inflation, hmm. incessant fr um, strike in the prices of consumers, uh, consumables, as income and salary remain the same in recent years and a bid to generate revenue at all costs. Now, many are complaining and people are worried that the rising cost is making it difficult for them to even meet their um, academic obligations for their children. What are your thoughts on this? What you Primary education globally, because it's seen as basic education. Yes. You can, if, if you don't get it right at primary, you'll be churning out, um, your citizens will not be able to add value to your economy if they don't get that basic foundation. That's for me, in every serious economy, should be free. Free. Absolutely. And it should be quality free. Mm -hmm. And in many serious economies, it is quality free. The challenge we have is, let's not use Lagos as a benchmark. Lagos, despite the fact, none of us have our children in public schools, by the way, and majority of Lagosians don't have their children, let me not use majority, majority of middle class Lagosians don't have their children in the public schools at primary level because they feel it is not going to give us the quality to add the value we want our children, the quality of value we want our children to add at the few, in the future. So... I totally understand the complaints. It, the um, government might say they are trying because they are looking at the books. But we need to, yes, look at the books, but look at the human beings as well. And when you look at the human beings, you realize that mm -mm, there's a, a, a lot of room for improvement at that basic level. Of course, as you go higher in terms of secondary school, it will be costing more. University education worldwide is cheap. It, it is expensive, expensive as compared to Nigeria. Most, even the private universities in Nigeria are still cheap as compared to international universities abroad. That's the truth. So in the, on the university level, I don't think that we're, I, I don't think our, our private universities are doing badly. But our public universities have been on strike for over 200 days. So obviously, it's nothing to write them about. Do we have an educational crisis? Yes. Do we have a financial educational crisis? Yes. Because everybody is now struggling to make money by every, every, mean pos every means possible to give their children a bit of advantage. Mm. And that is putting a lot of strains on families. As you are talking, my mind is just thinking we need to find creative ways to be able to afford education. And um, I guess this is where parents will come in. Um, also, um, financial institutions um, do this now. All sorts of insurance to help with parents as, you know, towards education, mm. you're putting money aside. When you have a boom, you're able to put some money aside in, in projection mm. of what you know, could happen in future. Those are the ways I feel that parents can help. But the truth is education will only keep getting more expensive, whether we like it or <laughs> not. In another, uh, in another, I was talking to someone much younger than me. I was saying, by the time you start having children, <laughs> <laughs> the amount, you know, she was talking about a school bag I got. I said, by the time you start having children, this school bag will be... 100 times the price. It's just the reality of life. Mm. And the only thing we have to do is keep working hard. And then this is where, whether we like it or not, this is where we now determine the sort of government and leaders that we want. Mm. They need to understand that these are the realities on ground and these are our issues. And what we want is, okay, create for us an enabling environment. We can take away um, security costs from schools if the government is able to do its job concerning protecting schools, making sure that insecurity is not a problem anymore. Um, 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 we're talking of a minimum wage. We have to do better. We need to um, close, block all the holes where mm. it comes to our um, revenue. Uh, we're talking about theft in the, um, in the oil industry. Yeah. We cannot be losing that amount of money, mm -hmm. I mean, as a government, and still going through insecurity, and still going through all the other economic challenges Plus that, yeah. our government needs to sit up. Our people now understand these are our um, challenges. And yeah. so it's only those who can make sure right. that these things are solved, you know, going forward that can help. The government has forgotten and neglected what is most important. So we constantly see the Naira losing value. We see the inflation going higher. We see, you know, families having to decide how costs should go. Yeah. In those days, parents would just do a scale of preference and take out one thing and provide what is most important, what is priority, which is education for children. It mm -hmm. has become a necessary expenditure. You it. cannot neglect it. And the cost of quality education has even become more necessary in our present times. So parents cannot now scale it and say, let's remove this, let's remove that. Which is why when you see NLC go, to, go on strike, sometimes 
because of the way they carry that issue and, and you know, maybe water it down, you might not see the seriousness of what we're talking about. An average Nigerian banker here, what he earns and what's the present reality of the value of what he earns, his purchasing power is so low compared to somebody doing the same job in some other climbs. And so you see why they're asking government, you need to do more. You, nobody hates government. We just want to be able to afford basic. So if I earn 200,000 and the value of 200,000 can give me my basic, who will be on strike? Mm -hmm. The lecturers presently are saying, uh, uh, federal government is proposing a 23% increase, which will put them at 800,000. They're saying, Kotiye, back. Because the reality is that as a lecturer, maybe by the time you get to professorship, your first child is already in university. If you put the value of quality university education, which is not here, on that money, you can afford it, except you are cutting corners. Thanks for staying with us. So Taraba State was in the news yesterday. Why? There was an outstanding welcome for the ex-governor, Jolly Inyame of Taraba State, who was granted a presidential pardon recently. Um, Ex-Governor John Yami was received by a mammoth crowd that thronged the airport to receive him while he was coming down from the plane. And obviously, many people responded and reacted to this welcome that he received, especially because he was convicted of graft, of, um, siphoning billions from the state for his personal use. And um, sometimes when we, when, we, when we discuss the fact that people get the leaders they deserve, these kinds of scenarios come to play. When you yep. think, okay, these are the kinds of people that you deserve because it, it's, sometimes people will celebrate who they are. Hmm. But what are your thoughts on this? Because society is made up of different kinds of people. People like that that I just described and those who are educated, who, are, who, who, who may know better, and those who are indifferent, it's not it's your money he's doing. What's your business? It's your front. <laughs> but I really did not expect that it will be a statewide fanfare. And he also, in the paper um, today, was saying that he, ha he holds no grudges against those who played the part in his, um, in, in his incarceration. Like, okay, is there something we're missing here? <laughs> you have committed a crime. What I expect to see is a remorseful Remorse. person. So... I wasn't surprised. I was expecting Ashwebi and celebration. I got that it. Our son that went to prison has come back home. Um, Taraba's history is very linked with this, with this governor. This governor was the first ever governor of Taraba State since 1992. And then he came back again and he rules the state. He has a strong relationship with the state. They don't see the issues. They're just saying this man that has been so good to us. This is the politics of poverty. This is the politics of Everybody that tip because they catch me, mm. you know. So it's the politics of you cannot even accuse me because I know what you are doing. I know the I know the no, lawyer that is helping you to snatch money abroad. So be, because my own case, they were able to see some loophole, and mm. I, I was the one that got convicted. So I'm going to forgive you for your deal. Those of you that did not come to prison to visit me, I will forgive you. Because if I want to open mouth, everything will scatter. Mm -hmm. But I choose to forgive you because all of us know how we sort ourselves as governors of the state. Mm -hmm. That is why a convicted, um, someone convicted of financial crime will come out and say he's choosing to forgive the ordeal he went through. Like, I don't understand. In this world, you should be the one that we are trying to forgive. The people of Taraba states that do not have access to good health care should be forgiving the government, former governor of Taraba state. I remember when my father came back from Kirikiri. He was in prison for, I can't remember how long it was. I didn't recognize him. He was skinny. Back mm. then, the prisons then were vicious. He, Beko, and a few others, the lawyers were thrown, the activists were thrown in the prison at the time. And he was looking like really starved. No, my mom used to go and take a day food, but he wasn't well. These guys came there, well kept. Mm -hmm. These guys, so he didn't come from prison. He came from like, where they were just house arrest somewhat. Mm. Mm. We looked to Atwa Mizai in 2015 and thought, ah, this one will come, and all these bad things are happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. The same person is the one that offended me in this one. It's not the people that went to go and work on Yamil. Yamil will always have people that he has helped before that will owe, owe him love. But the person that offended me is the person who abused the rule of pardon. Because you mentioned your dad now. 
Those are the people Pardon was made for. Mm. People who had integrity, people who had a pedigree, who for one mistake or the other found themselves in jail. Not somebody, they were, those were freedom fighters yeah. who were jailed, who were arrested, you know, to Isn't shut them up. Who, who, when people who deserve pardon are people who were claimed at one point to be inciting and they mm. found that they didn't incite, but they fought for the interest of the nation. Those are the people who deserve pardon. Not the person who have committed a crime. Mm. Convicted by Supreme Court. The hey. person who have plundered that state's resources. Who so. was tried, convicted, who went to, quest, to, 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 to contest his conviction in the Supreme Court and lost. Mm. Ah. That person now deserves a, a pardon. Is the person that offended me. The the time. Thanks for staying with us. So last weekend, in a video obtained by Sahara reporters, Bauchi State Governor Bala Mohammed caused a chaotic scene during his visit to Azari Town by throwing bundles of money at residents. According to Section 21346 of the Central Bank of Nigeria CBN Act 2007, clearly will be beat any form of abuse of the Nigerian currency. Now, in addition to this, we all know that many people spray money at parties during celebrations. And because of this new, um, law? This new law and the fact that even the EFCC has frowned against it, many try to do it as discreet as possible. Mm. You know? So even go to parties, yes, you spray, but you know that you are spraying it because you're respecting the Naira, which you get. But what he was doing was on the road throwing bundles at people, which com completely contravenes this law. Now, what are your thoughts on this, especially because this is part of Nigeria's issue, yeah. when our leaders say one thing and, do the, and other. do the exact opposite. So one of the issues we have in this country is the fact that our leaders do not lead by examples. And if we want to progress, if we want to go further, if we want to have a country that is worthy of the citizens and the citizens that are worthy of the country, we need to start paying attention to those leaders who will lead by example. Those leaders who will not flout the rule of law because they have immunity. Those leaders who will be accountable to the people because, not just because people are watching, but because that is who they are. Leaders who have integrity is what we are going to be looking for going forward. Unfortunately, we do not have a lot of them, and that is why you see that there's a law prohibiting so, so, and so, and then you go ahead and do it because, after all, nobody can ask you questions. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, you will see the same uh, law officials go and pick up people who are spraying money in their own backyards because they do not have immunity. I've always said it here that what is good for the goose mm. is good for the gander. If you're going to be flouting the laws that you make and put in the constitution, why make, make them it. at all? Let's just know that this is a kangaroo village. Everybody can do as they like. He knows very well what he was doing and he also knows the wastage that he was doing. You know, you've created a problem up north and I'm saying it very carefully here. A lot of their governors, their elites have created this wide gap of poverty. And they know how to throw money at it. So enter the car, stand on the roof, and throw money at the problem. You are healed. You know, if a former governor from Lagos here went up north to Tarab, I think, or Nasarab, where there was a flood, and he gave 50 million to assist flood victims to... And we didn't see the money. And we, we didn't, didn't see it. the money. Just heard of that one know that they know how to solve a problem. But you went on the political mm -hmm. relevance tour drive, and start throw, throwing money at the crowd because you know that problem of poverty that you have created, you throw money at it. So I think he knows very well the tool that they have created and he knows how well to exploit it. Exploit it. But you'd expect that the CBN, even though he has immunity, lets him understand it because I know they can do that. They can say, okay, even beyond your immunity, we have notified you of, an, of a standing issue that you will at, mm. uh, answer to the moment you drop office. They, well, I don't know what they did to the former governor of Adam Brass State. I'll just remind that he's actually a people. former senator. Senator, yeah. You see? Yeah. So, he knows. Oh, oh, so, I mean, so so he makes the law sleep. Oh, oh. He knows. He knows so, very see, well. But, now, so we've, we've addressed him. That mm -hmm. was wrong. Mm -hmm. But as I said, we can, we, can, we can see how this also happens in other areas, how people take advantage of the people and just assume, mm, is it not Nigerians? They will get over it. Yeah. What, what was the big deal? Because this behavior, we can look at it in a way where a leader goes out, even in various areas you might not think, even might not throw bundles, 
but he'll just show money and they're spraying money anyhow. Is that same disrespect to the Naira? So in my view is that do you think that how do we begin to change the mindset of our leaders? Hey, now we go change their mindset. We have to remind <laughs> <laughs> Mariah, the thing is, eh, um, we have disrespected ourselves so much because of this greed that we have in it. We want to quickly amass and protect ourselves. And so we disrespect, in that amassing, hmm. we disrespect ourselves, our integrity. We disrespect the other person out there that we are stealing from. So things that you're supposed to use to better their lives so that they will have a form of dignity, even if it's tiny like this, mm -hmm. a semblance of dignity, you take it away from them mm -hmm. and then you throw things at them because mm -hmm. you have no respect for them. Mm -hmm. And trust me, the energy you give, you are going to get it back. You are disrespecting yourself. The reason why I'm interested in the Bula question is not because of the, the sensation of it. A lot of single mothers, a lot of... Um, <laughs> People, or single this, people. Even, even married women, yeah. even married married use, women. use these tools. And you think to yourself, themselves. is it helpful? Is it, does, it, does, does it meet the need? Is it healthy? Is it hygienic? Is it, I mean, and, and you seem to, I thought you had 50. You're telling me you had over, eight, over 50. Over 50. Okay, now let me talk Why? about this. Why? <laughs> for one no, place. from the fact that I influenced for a Bola a company. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Now, this, the thing is, I met a doctor, a, a doctor who, who told me that, Sex toys. Can I use that? Yes. An English word. Her hair helps enhance, you know, relationship, marriages. Mm -hmm. Husband and wife can use it. You know, most times you can just get back home and you touch your wife and she's like, she's tired. By the time you just on that vibration, push it. It stimulates. She will just come up alive. How far can we go? go? <laughs> Sorry, I, no, I think, I think you're going too far. Yeah. I was just going to say bola. And whoever figures it out, figure it out. Now you've told them what it is. So that's it. Them. So it makes you people, you Why know... Why do you need 50, though? Yeah. I don't... <laughs> Do you yes, use I don't. Oh my god! How I many do you use inside? Just one. Okay. Oh, you have a favorite one. Yes, a favorite one. Oh, just I was one. wondering, like fifty sides of your body, like what part of your body? Else? No, funniest part is mine. Don't penetrate. So, so there's this story of there's an allegation of um, sex for role mm -hmm. allegations, and I'll just like to even hear your side because we have heard the social media side. Mm -hmm. Social media. Yes. So no, no, tell no, us. no, no, the point is... Please, can you defend that allegation? No, the, 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 naturally, they will always go for something. They will want something to go down. If it gets to a stake, something will be weak. But me, let me be honest with you. There is no way somebody will come... Our job is, is passion-driven. Uh -huh. If you want me to attack those that find love in the industry, you want me to be insulting those that are couples. But when people know that... Sex for all is a serious thing, and if they attach it to you, it weakens your reputation without basis, without evidence. Look at the other young lady that I helped into the industry. Yes. She went on for a long time and claimed sex for all, blah, blah, blah. Is it the one that said you showed her uh, a yes, picture of your are, They are agents. I have many enemies, they use anybody. But you could say, which is the big, big game. Yeah. I can saying, say, naturally, you were you are a soft, you are very soft, you are very, you are very easy. You, I, I offered you a role. Okay. You got into the role, I didn't do that. You went on for a long time saying things that were wicked me because I took a firm, disciplined decision when you messed up. The next thing is later, you know, okay, let me come, you know, she came up with the truth. He didn't ask for sex for role, but he asked me out. So where, does, where does asking somebody out? If I like you, Auntie Morayo, even where I, I can toss you. Ah, uh, Mr. Bao. You. <laughs> no, it, you see, you. If, I, if I do it before Mr. Bao, he can react. He will only say, hey, young man, she's mine. Oh, sorry, sir, you're lucky. I will only compliment him. Koba. Me, I shall say why I can toss Queen Elizabeth if I think she's I like She's dead. Her. No, late, when she was alive. <laughs> <laughs> but why should they turn it to crime? Because they know social media is so reckless. They put up like they will be... They can't just oppose the difference between sex for role and asking you out. There are lots of producers and directors that we. Show me the corner. Show our kids or doing your city. Don't go and allow our kids. They use it for men. We are weaker. And you're bringing money advantage. Let me have it. Only people are raised properly. Only few. They say there's no wait, Mariah. They say there's no smoke without fire. That if you are around a dustbin, after a while you start smelling. Do you think there's anything you're doing that is making all these allegations come up? I am not perfect. If I toast you, you say no, I didn't force you, and I'm doing my own. But you expect me that because you reject, I should star you in my movie. Don't, that year, no, don't leave your 
So they have so to accept for you to start no. in the movies. Eh, eh, they get angry because they think because they didn't accept. That's, that's why they not start. Oh. Where is the condition that I must use in my movie? That is why they, that guy said he didn't accept, he didn't use me in his movie. What kind of entitlement is that? <laughs> they bring it to social media and you all dissect it and think I don't have life. So I just I just go blank. Hey, do you know what I'm curious about? <laughs> I'd just like to know who 